Good morning. Welcome to another worship service. For those who are, who are at home watching, welcome. Indeed, God is good. The fact that we are all here this morning, we have breath in our bodies. He is truly amazing. Our, our call to worship this morning is taken from Job 19, verses 25 to 27. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him again with mine own eyes. I, I, I not another. How my heart yearns within me. There ended a reading of a portion of God's word with me. Well, see? Amen. Amen. Our opening song is Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it was not so. God in heaven, we come before you once more, dear Lord. Thank you for a new day, a new day that you have blessed us with. So many persons did not have the opportunity to open their eyes this morning. Some persons are really ill, dear Lord. And for the fact that we all have gathered here today, Lord, we give you thanks because because if it wasn't for you some of us wouldn't have this opportunity to be here dear lord and we give you thanks thank you for always being there for us in the midst of our trying circumstances dear lord thank you you have been so great to us you have been so good lord i pray your continuous protection upon each and every one of our members dear lord lord i pray that you will just build a fence around everyone here dear lord and just cover us, continue to hold us, continue to mold us, dear Lord. Lord, for those members who have strayed since the pandemic and even before that, dear Lord, Lord, I pray that you will just quicken their hearts, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll just, they will just return to you, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that they will remember what you have done for them in their life, dear Lord, and they will just come back to you, dear Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are ill, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that you are continuous healing upon them, dear Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are mourning, dear Lord. I pray that you just give them comfort. Lord, I pray for our nation as a whole, dear Lord. Lord, you know the crime is rising, dear Lord. Lord but we come against it in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. We bind up all the plans of the enemy and fling it straight into the pits of hell, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that you will just continue to be your rock, continue to be your strength, dear Lord. Thank you for everything that you have blessed us with, dear Lord. In your son's precious name, I do pray. Amen. 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 All right. So now we're going, we'll be going into our time of praise and worship, and the praise team will take over.
Praise the Lord. It's another day to be alive and to be able to sing His praises. We could be elsewhere, lifeless, but God has granted us the grace to be here another day. And we are going to give thanks and praises to His holy name because Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. Amen. 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 Hey! 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise his holy name this morning. I know that we are warm and the shackles have been broken off our feet and off our minds. We're just going to continue to praise him and release ourselves to Almighty God so that he can do with us whatsoever he chooses because that's why we are here. I don't think there's anybody here who came here by accident. You are here for a purpose this morning, Hallelujah. and that is to praise his holy name. Amen. So let us release ourselves. We bind every spirit of distraction, and we just release the blood of Jesus and the spirit of Hallelujah. praise over Hallelujah. here so we Hallelujah. can worship and praise the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gathering. So we're going to praise him with everything that we have. And when you start praising him, think of the things that God has done for you this week, this morning, years ago. And as you praise him, just lift it up before him because he's going to do more. For blessings on the way and for things to come in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise, praise him. him. Praise, praise him. Somebody praise him.
Hallelujah. We continue to worship him. We are here today because we have somebody who is fighting for us. Eh? Amen. The God of the armies of Israel. Yes, Lord. And we have the victory because of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. And today we are going to sing it like we believe it. Amen. Because that's what we live by as children of God. Our victory belongs to Jesus. It's not in self. It's not in a friend. It's not in whosoever. It belongs to Jesus. Amen. Only in Jesus. He's fighting for us. It's a room for victory.
Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. One of our favorite songs this morning. It speaks to all our lives, yes? So let's go for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. Indeed, our God is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and a light in the darkness. Trust me, once you will upon Jesus, you will always have victory in him, no matter what. No matter what, because we will always have the win once we hold on. So I'll just encourage you, saints, just press on in the name of Jesus. Our speaker for this morning is no stranger to us. He has been in the ministry.
for more than 20 years. He is a former, former student of the Calabar High School. He is a well-educated individual. He is married to Sister Sharon Phillips. The union has produced three children, no adults, Daniel, Zachary, and Zane. So as he come, I encourage you to listen to what he has to say. Trust me, he is filled with knowledge. And just give him your undivided attention. The person I'm speaking of is Deacon Andrew Phillips. So as he come, I'm going to let us stand as we sing Bless Thy Words. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, we give you thanks. We want to glorify your name, Lord God. Father, as we dive into your words this morning, I pray, Lord God, at first, Lord God, it would have penetrated me, my soul, and my entire being, Lord God. And so, Lord God, I'm able to impart your word in correctness, sharpness, Lord God, and accuracy. Father, pray for Myself and the heirs, Lord God, that, Lord, you'll minister to us. You reach the very parts, recesses, the spaces that we hide or try to hide from you, Lord God. And that, Lord God, it will cause us to consider, to contemplate, to repent where necessary, Lord God. Be with us, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And be seated. want to thank... Brother Ali Alvani for his kind introduction. And um, when he says, I have a lot of knowledge, I um, don't know about that. <laughs> but knowledge comes from the word of God, don't? Beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But I think he meant to have something to share. And um, Without further ado, and with the time in mind, I want to be direct. I want to be, I want to get the points across. So, today, I want to look at a, a topic that affects all of us. And if it hasn't affected you as yet, either you're oblivious or you don't care or serious experience will be coming your way because none of us can es escape it. When we're talking about death, dying, suffering, and loss. We're in a pandemic now, COVID-19, unless you've been on another planet. And we're all affected. The stats for COVID since it began the number of cases now, as of up to yesterday, is over 186 million cases, with over 4 million deaths. 4 million, over 4 million people have died. In the US alone, over 600,000. India is next, with over 400,000. Brazil, over 500,000. So Brazil is next. In Jamaica, 
we are ranked 113th with 1,114 deaths. This was up until probably Friday. Uh, didn't you hear what happened yesterday? So definitely, we're well acquainted with death, suffering, and dying. Amen? Remember that COVID. There are many persons murdered. The other things don't give a break, remember? <laughs> the other sources of death and suffering and loss. They have not given a break. They have not left us. So they are still around. You know? We still suffer loss, whether it's actual or perceived loss. Sickness and death of loved ones. And Penwood, we have had our fair share. We have had our fair share. Just Friday, we had a funeral, no? So we have had many in the past three or so years, we have had a lot of loss, a lot of losses. And there are other things happening. Businesses fail, families break up, corruption, loss of opportunities, disappointment, which is a, which is a major one. Some people don't recover well from disappointment. That's a major one. So the world has a lot of loss, suffering, and death, and grief to deal with. COVID has only compounded it. And what makes it worse, a lot of people don't get a chance for closure because the funeral services are restricted. People can't give, pay their last respects. Eh? That intensifies the grief. Would you agree? There are many persons that I could not have gone to the funeral. And there are a lot of persons still going through the grieving process. So I want to put up something quickly here. This, this psychiatrist, over 50 years ago, she died in 2004, but she wrote a book. And it brought me back to when I was in my basic nursing training. We had to go through this. So you might not see this clear, so I'll speak it. But the psychiatrist, she was a co-founder of the hospice care. You know what hospice care is? For persons with terminal illness, cancer, or dying. So we have one of those hospitals in Jamaica, Donna Hope Institute. So that's where terminal persons are, they are dying, and they are going through the grieving process because they're terminal. So she co-founded that movement of hospice care. So she's well acquainted. She studied these persons going through death and dying, sickness. And um, so she has five stages. I don't know if Claire is seeing that, but the first one is denial, anger, then bargaining, then depression, then acceptance. And it doesn't mean that we will go through these steps as they come. Some people start at, at acceptance, others at anger, but and it doesn't mean that you'll go through all of the stages. But just a quick synopsis of what the stages speak about. So the first one is denial. So quickly, I'll try to. So, so denial is the first of the five stages of grief, they say. It helps us to survive the loss. In this stage, the world becomes meaningless and overwhelming. Life makes no sense. We are in a state of shock and denial. We go numb. We wonder how we can go on. If we can go on, why should we go on? Denial and shock, it helps us to cope. It's a coping mechanism for us. It helps us to go through some things. So, but as you accept the reality of the loss and start to ask yourself questions, it begins the healing process. You are becoming stronger and the denial is beginning to fade. But as you proceed, all the feelings you were denying begin to surface. So that's just an initial. Then the next one is anger. Oh, and don't we know we are well acquainted with anger when we have suffered loss. So we are angry at the person. If it's a death, we are angry. Angry at the person who died, we're angry at ourselves, and we're angry at God sometimes. Huh? And everything, for some of us, 
we display anger. Anger is a crutch sometimes for, for us in that. It's the only thing that's real, eh? <laughs> and we're angry. The next stage is, is bargaining. So we say things like, Lord, God, if you save this, if you restore this, I will dedicate my life to you. I will do anything you want me to do. So we, we want to bargain with God. All right? Depression. We dealt with depression in a discussion, but depression is part of the whole thing, and we know what that is. Life becomes meaningless. We, we fall in, a, in the doldrums, and some people stay there, and then it becomes an illness. Eh? And then acceptance, when we come to realize, look, this is it. This is the reality. How many of us can identify with these things? We have all suffered loss of various kinds. Disappointment. Suffering. And we go through these. Well, so that's the psychiatrist's view. That's the psychiatrist's view. But death, loss, and grief is more spiritual than we think. Amen? There's a spiritual side to it. Amen? There's a spiritual side. So, today I want to look. And you can guess the person that I might be speaking about. I want to look at someone who is well acquainted with grief and loss and suffering. I want to take a guess who it is? Oh, Job, Job. Job this time. Yes, Jesus is well acquainted. But Job... So the book of Job, it has what, 42, 42 chapters? It's a, a long book. And I won't imagine that I'll be going through it here verse to ver by verse today. We don't have the time. But I encourage us, as I highlight some things, that we look at it. We look at Job, and there is more than meets the, the eyes in Job's story. Yes, it's a story about grief, loss, suffering. But it has many lessons, many, many lessons in it that I could not do in, in the short time I have. I couldn't go through. But Job is, the book of Job is considered to be one of the oldest books of the Bible. It's considered to be written a long time ago, one of the first books written. It says, the book of Job, as I said, has a lot of stories, a lessons. But Job, as he speaks, is a wealthy man, an upright man who fears God. Through the fires of affliction, which include the loss of his family, his wealth and his health, his health, a series of debates take place with his friends over the subject of suffering. Very interesting debates. And then in a discussion with God, Job is brought to the end of his questioning God's actions in his life and trying to justify himself he finally grasped the greatness the majesty the sovereignty and utter independence of god god is all almighty and he doesn't answer to man amen and throughout all of that god restores him so just quickly in a synopsis, chapters 1 to 3, I'm going to talk about the drama, the debates, and the deliverance. So chapter 1 to 3 tells you about Job, about his character. Good line. Job 1. Let us look quickly at, at Job and the facts about his integrity. So it says here, there lived a man whose name was Job. He was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Look at verse 8. And it says, Then the Lord boasts about him to Satan. Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So we get the picture. There is no doubt in our minds that Job was a righteous man. No doubt. He was endorsed by the man himself, God. 
Can we imagine for a moment that God could be saying that about us? Is it possible? I need the answer. Is it possible that God can boast about us? Of course. Of course. Of course. So the drama is in chapters 1 to 3. Is that God boasts about Job. Satan, the adversary, is described as the adversary. The accuser said to God. Let us, let us see what it says. Because we're getting a rare glimpse in the halls of heaven. We're getting a rare glimpse. We're seeing what's happening in the spiritual realms. Amen? God, the book of Job is important for us to know that these things happen where we cannot see. Amen? But they're happening. And it's happening. So Satan claims. Satan claims that people love God only for material things. Is he far off? If we're honest, is he far off? Satan is the master of half truths. Amen? Because even he saw Job and he never got any evidence or had any evidence of that. He was still making a generalized statement. He says that people love God only for what God can give them. So this was not only an attack on Job. And by extension, all mankind. But it was a direct slap in the face of God. You know that? He was challenging God. That's what he do. He threw out the challenge. And God took it up. God said, all right, game on. Game on. God is in control. Amen? Nothing surprises God. So Satan going one day. In one day, Job lost all his wealth and his family except his wife. Yeah? Satan comes back now and says, every man will give anything to save their lives. But you hear what Jesus says? Whosoever lays down his life for me, amen, will get it back, Amen. So Satan is telling a lie again. He's telling a lie again. And we saw that Jesus, our Redeemer, came and laid down his life for us. Amen? Amen. So Satan is just spewing out half-truths. He's assuming he underrates God. Eh? Uh, he doesn't respect God. So that's chapters 1 to 3. Chapters 4 to 37 now is a series of debates. But from chapter 3, Job start cursed the day in barn. Then his friends know in the debates from chapter 4 to 37, his debates. One of them, when, when, when one of them spoke, it's for five chapters Job spoke for. Huh? Job, as the debate rages on, Job, it gets hotter. Eh? Angers, uh, I mean, nerves start showing. Job was angry. He was angry and he described his friends in many ways. First, he says that they're accusing him. They are judging him, which was correct. They were judging him. But he responds to them in many sharp ways and scathing ways. He says in 13, 4 and 5, he says, you are worthless physicians. Imagine you come to comfort me, but you are worthless physicians. And have no help whatsoever. Eh? And he says, shut up on the mouth. You guys, <laughs> he said, if you shut up, that would be wisdom for you. He was really insulting them, his friends, because they were piling on judgment. They were incorrectly interpreting what was happening to Job. He said, you are miserable comforters. He said, I will not find a wise man among you. Then Job, out of frustration now, starts to appeal to God as his judge. Job's defenses are much longer than his friend's accusations. After all of that, the fourth friend speaks now. And he warned Job about self-righteousness. You know, 
it's a thin line between righteous and self-righteous amen it is a thin line you know what the thin line is acknowledging god to be in control of everything amen because what job was saying i'm a good man job could correctly refute all the accusations that his friends his friends said that because he have some deep dark sin that's why this is happening to him and job says no nothing like that i made a vow with my own eyes that i will not look at any woman and he refuted everything that they said and it was correct but then job went overboard he forgot that it is god who justifies amen he forgot that you know sometimes we're going through loss and grief and suffering and we ask god why why me god what did i do what did i do to deserve this i deny myself of so many things i mean i run down the woman or the man I married and I, you know committed relationship i don't chase off after the world i deny myself of this so god where you do this for eh i'm gonna see them wicked people out there them have it easy as the psalmist say eh? they have it easy but job forgot eh? that those people are on slippery slope amen that's what the scripture says and that their end is coming amen so job though though a righteous man became self-righteous his friend suggests to him elihu the last one who spoke suggests that job needs to humble himself before god and submit to god's work of purifying his life through trials amen you know what the scripture says the lord chastens and he corrects those whom he love amen he said if the lord doesn't correct us and chasten us then we are none of his we are what illegitimate amen we are illegitimate if the lord doesn't try us and test us eh? he tests us because he says when we are tried then we'll come through like pure gold amen i want to say that job was going through the grief process you can see clearly he was angry at times he denied some things and some of them correctly most of them correctly he he, he was in a spot he was depressed yet still job has some gems he says for i know that my redeemer lives amen and i will he says though my flesh remember job was covered with sores from head to toe he said though my flesh be destroyed yet with my eyes i shall see and i will stand him with him on that day so job was prophetic eh? speaking about jesus christ i know that my redeemer lives amen we need to reassure ourselves amen that our redeemer lives amen in chapters 38 to 42 we speak about the deliverance where god restored job amen god restored gave him double all the possessions gave him back his children amen but before that remember job when when job's friends couldn't match job because job was all over them they had no answer to refute him they had nothing to refute him when job turned on god now and start ask god and say some things and god has a sense of humor you know because <laughs> the same things that job talk about boy leviathan and 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 the, the beer mutt and the things of nature god started from there and said look answer this god god answer first thing job they said if i ask god anything will he answer he's just gonna come in in the storm and destroy me that's what job said you know and then god came to him in the storm <laughs> and started asking him some questions god has a sense of humor eh? 
is God will start right at the spot that we're at. Amen? God will start there to bring us back to our senses. To put things in perspective. So it's a Job was covered with this gloom. You see, depression, you see, loss and grief can cause you to be in a spot. Amen? When you're thinking not clear, you're just expressing your human self. Eh? Your anger. The shock and the, everything does come on you. And sometimes we need clarity. God is able to bring us focus and clarity. Amen? God asked Job to look away from himself and look to him. God asked Job some questions that Job could not answer. All the things that Job spoke about, God asked him, Can you hold Leviathan with a hook? Can you have a hook in my mouth and hold him? Can you tame him? The bear moth, can you tame him? Can you bring him home as a house pet? Eh? And the Lord describes the, 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 the power of the bear moth. And basically said to Job that despite all of that, his bone is like iron and all of that. Can you tame him? I can. I can. Nothing is impossible because I made it. I made them. The Lord asked me about the constellations, see? Eh? The bear. Play these. God spoke to him about all of that and said, Can you answer any questions pertaining to that? You don't know everything. That's what that's the lesson in that. You don't know everything. Sometimes we're going through things and we have a narrow perspective. We're seeing it from our side when we're going through loss, grief disappointment but we need to look to God amen he is the creator of the universe and yet still the same as the song says the same gentle hands it holds me when I'm broken amen and it conquers death to bring me victory amen so God gave two speeches the first one he reveals his power and his wisdom as creator and sustainer of the physical and animal world. Job could only acknowledge his ignorance and insignificance. Amen? So God put it in perspective. In the second speech, God describes his sovereign authority and power. Amen? Job responds by acknowledging his error with a repentant heart. A lot of people didn't know what Job's sin was in this, eh? We never paid attention to that. Or would Job repent if he never sinned? Amen. Because God knows the heart. Amen. God knows the heart. And Job's sin was that he was self-righteous, denying that God is sovereign over everything. Amen. And that God does things in his time and for his purpose. Amen. So, Job, if, so the question is, if he couldn't understand God's working in the natural realm, because God asked him come some questions, you know this work? Who told, who told the, 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 um, the sea that they can't come so far? Eh? The sea can't come. God asked him these things. So if he couldn't understand the natural, the things in the natural realm, how could he possibly understand things in the supernatural realm? Eh? We won't understand everything. Amen? We won't. Job finally understands his suffering from God's perspective. Satan's challenge had, becomes, had become a way of God putting Job through his school. Amen? Yet there was something that Job lacked. Amen? And God used the opportunity of Satan... To shape and mold and fill that gap in Job's life. Amen. I want us to think about that. So the question is asked, so what? So what? With all of that, so what? How does that pertain to me? How does that apply to me? What we need to know, it is human to suffer grief and go through some 
are all the stages of grief in response to death, dying, loss. I'm reminding you, it's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, but not necessarily in that order. Job, I think, started at acceptance. The first thing Job said, naked I came and naked I'll go back, eh? Blessed be the name of the Lord, eh? So Job started out saying, it happened, so it go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Loss, death, grief, sickness, suffering is not an indication of the wickedness or sin committed by an individual. We need to make that clear. We need to make that clear. Job's friends were off the premise that Job had sinned one deep dark sin him have, and he must repent because he's a sinner. How oh, many times, sometimes, people going through trouble and we wrongfully. Eh? You remember the story in Luke? I think it's Luke chapter 13, where the man was born blind. And Jesus' disciples asked Jesus, is it him or his parents who sinned? That's the question they asked, you know. And what was Jesus' answer? Neither him nor his parents sinned. But this is for the glory of God. Amen? This is for the glory of God. So whatever is happening, good or bad, it's for the glory of God. Amen? If this, if this man wasn't born blind... Highly improbably, he would have an, had an encounter with God. And if you read, the story goes on because there was a long debate about it. The Pharisees called the man in a meeting, and the man said, Look here, all I can say now, I was blind and now I can see. And Jesus went to him and asked him some questions. You can go read it. And so he believed in Jesus after the encounter so whatever is happening to us though it might be hard to accept at this point it is God's purpose amen it is for God's purpose it is for God's purpose so we know that God is wise all wise all powerful and his will is perfect in our finite minds we don't understand his actions we know that suffering doesn't make sense to us Sometimes we wrongly wonder, are not God's people supposed to be prosperous, healthy, wealthy, and all the above? Sometimes we wrongfully ask that question. That's a fool's question, you know that. We're going down the wrong road when we ask those questions. Yes, we're human, and sometimes when things happen, Shouldn't we be living a sorrow-free life? Those are the things we think. But, you know, we question God sometimes. We even shake our fists at him, our fists at him in anger and frustration. But Job's lesson teaches us that there are many things that we don't understand. You hear me? Many things that we don't understand. You see, as I said earlier, if loss and grief don't come to you yet, it's around the corner, you hear? It's around the corner. What is going to be your response? What is your response going to be when it comes? There are some life lessons from Job, and I, I quickly want to, as I wrap up, don't want to go much longer. Some life lessons from Job. Spiritual affairs are going on in heaven that you and I know nothing about. You hear me? Spiritual things are happening that you and I, we know nothing about. Amen? Issues of life, suffering, loss, grief cannot always be understood in our human terms. You hear? God's people do suffer. Bad things do happen to good people. And we know that there are some sources of suffering. Some sources are definitely from Genesis, the fall of man. That's the root of our suffering. Amen? The fall of man. 
Then there are the consequences of our sins, as Galatians 6, 7 says. Everyone shall bear their own burdens, no? The sins of others, Genesis 37, 26 to 28. Unavoidable circumstances, like in Luke 10. Unavoidable disaster, in Luke 13. Consequences of our beliefs. We suffer sometimes for our beliefs, for standing up for God. As the song, as the song says, stand up for Jesus. We suffer for that at times. And the big one, as it says in Job, God's greater plan. God's plan supersedes all. Amen? We are in his hands and he's in control. He's in control. Another thing is we cannot always judge a person's spirituality by his or her pain or prosperity. <laughs> As we're there, go to the, the next one. You know, sometimes we have someone who has suffered loss and we... Sorry, you might not say that, but I'm going to read it for you. And we try to say we're comforting them. We say we're comforting them, but we make it worse. We make it worse. So the psychologists and the experts come up with some things that we can... He said the best things to say to someone in grief or suffering loss. I'm going to read them. I am so sorry for your loss. I wish I had the right words. Just know I care. I don't know how you feel, but I am here to help in any way I can. You and your loved one will be in my thoughts and prayers. My favorite memory of your loved one is, I am always just a phone call away. Give a hug instead of saying something. We all need help at times like this. I am here for you. I am usually up early or late. If you need anything, you can call me. Saying nothing, just be with the person. So Job's friends, they started off good. It was for seven days they sat with, him, sat with him without saying a thing. Next slide. So we look at the, the, the best things. You don't have to say them word for word, but along that line. So the worst things to say to someone in grief. At least she live a long life. Many people die young. She has 70 years. She live a long life. You should be lucky. Grateful. Many people die young. He's in a better place. That's one we say a lot of times. The person is asking, I, I rather that they be here. Huh? She brought this on herself. Or he brought it on himself. There is a reason for everything. Hmm. That sounds good, but... Aren't you over him yet? He has been dead for a while now. Move on with your life now. That's not helpful. You can have another child still. Not helpful. She was such a good person. God wanted her to be with him. That's very common. I know how you feel. Really? No. No. She did what she came here to do, and it was her time to go. Be strong. Be strong. Go to the other slide. So here are some traits that we should have. Move on for me. Here are some traits that we should have. The best traits, they said, is so you're going to comfort someone like Job's friends, we must give them, they must get some credit, you know. Because Job had other relatives, because at the end, it says all of Job's brothers and stuff came. Before that, we never heard that any of them came. So let us give them credit. At least they came and stood there with their friend. Just that they came to the wrong conclusion, which many of us do all the time. We judge when we see things happen. We judge incorrectly. The best trait is to be supportive, but not trying to fix it. It's about feelings. Being non-active, not telling anyone what to do. Don't tell them what to do. Just let them, you know. 
Admitting can't make it better. To say to them, admit. Admit, say you sin. Admit that, man. It won't make it better. Not asking for something or someone. Change feelings. Recognize loss. Not time limited, meaning don't tell the person it's time now. Uh, it's time now. You move on. Next. So the worst street, they want to fix the loss. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to fix it. You don't understand everything. They're about our discomfort. They are directive in nature. They rationalize or try to explain loss. They may be judgmental. May minimize the loss. Put a timeline on the loss. Same thing. A time now you move on. So, to conclude now, more things that could be said, but I'll stop there. God always has a reason for what you are asked to endure. Amen? Do we believe that? God is intentional. He is working it out for our good. Amen? And all things work together for those who love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Those are some scriptures we need to hold on to. Those are our, our shields. It guards our minds. Amen. It soothes us. It soothes us when we are in the depression, the anger. Let us speak those to ourselves. Let us speak it to one another. Everything is done for his purpose, his glory, and for our good. Amen. In in first Peter 1 6 to 8, it says, Now for a little while we suffer grief. Turn to it for me, please. We need to see the word. Six to eight. Six to eight. First Peter six to eight. First Peter one, sorry, verses six to eight. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Amen. Joy is what we need and the joy of the Lord is our strength amen and as Job says in 19 Job 19 25 it was a reading this morning from 24 to 26 but he says I know my Redeemer lives and I will stand with him on that day amen he's a good God suffering should improve our worship as we draw closer to God and his comfort do you have some unfinished business when it comes to dealing with grief, loss, suffering, disappointment? Grieve, cry, allow yourself to go through the phases, but keep holding on to God. Draw nearer to God and trust him and allow him to have his way. As the song says, when we can't see his hand, trust his heart. Amen. Amen. Let's be standing. Does Jesus care? He certainly does care. And we need to make a decision. Brother Gary highlighted Job and what Job went through. And many of us share 
many of Job's experiences. Amen? But God was there with Job. And he will be there with you. If you've never walked with God, death is real. People say there are two things that are certain in life, death and taxes. You're going to have to face those two. But it doesn't have to be all bad. Because with Christ in the vessel, we can smile. Amen? At the storm. So I urge us to come. If you've never had a relationship with Christ, or if you've walked away, come and give your life, or recommit your life to Christ as we sing this song. Does Jesus care? When my heart is pain too deeply for mirth and our song. Won't you come? Does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply for mirth or song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. Oh yes, He cares, I know He cares, His heart is touched with my Us, we're going to sing the chorus once more but I urge you seriously just consider your state we haven't been fellowshipping as we have as we are accustomed to and we have kind of lost our way I urge you just look at your life examine yourself and if you're found wanting reconnect with God it's always good to be connected to God. Amen? Amen? Let's just sing that chorus once more. one who came forward to recommit um, that scale here. P princess beg your pardon princess manning is here and she's going to be so we'll be taking it in a little while um at this time um pastor wallace will come with the communion meditation
Say good morning and thank God for Jesus Christ and thank God for his blood. The scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Under the law, no matter what the people did, the scripture tells us that they would come once per year and the priest would offer blood, blood sacrifice to God. But they did not get forgiveness. What they got was a rolling back of their sins. But Jesus Christ came, and he came, and he died once for all. His precious blood was shed for your precious soul, that today you and I can sit in the presence of Almighty God and get forgiveness from God. And in getting that forgiveness from God, you and I in God's eyes through Jesus Christ are made perfect, perfect, perfect. And that's why you and I today can praise Almighty God, can glorify Almighty God. And this communion, we call them the emblems. They represent the body and blood of Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross, the pain he went through, the pain he suffered. Today, you and I have forgiveness. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. So let's live within that forgiveness and praise God every single day and love him and serve him and rejoice that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. His blood was shed so you and I could have forgiveness today. Amen. Amen. Father, bless these emblems. Oh, bless us, your people, dear God, as remember what Christ did for us on the cross and what he continues to do to everyone who will come and submit themselves to him to receive that cleansing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, Bless these emblems now as we partake through Jesus Christ, O Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be unto God. On the night in which, in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and he gave thanks. And he said to his disciples, take and eat. This represents my body. Let us partake. Like man, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples. And he said, Drink ye all of it, because this is a new covenant in my blood, which, is, which was shed for the forgiveness of sin. Let us partake. Thank you, Lord, that your blood was shed on Calvary's cross for the sins of the world and here we are today dear God thanking you thanking you for removing our sins that today Lord we could become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus thank you for calling us your children and thank you for this privilege we give you all praise and all the glory through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. We want to go through the week's announcements quickly at this time. Our Bible reading for this week is Job 1 through 5. Job chapters 1 through 5. So we're going to read through Job. We heard about Job in the sermon this morning. 1 through 5. Bible study. We'll be face to face. We had not, not a, a great, great number, but we had a good number. And we pray that we'll continue to come out face to face. And we'll still have online, you know, we'll stream it online. But if you can, please come. The fellowship is good. The fellowship is good. And we continue in encounter with God. We want to wrap up this week on Abraham encounter with God. Night service tonight online via Zoom at 7 p.m. And last week we had a good program, you know, it talked about drama, you know, and Sister Ruth and the, <laughs> the rest, it was good, it was good. <laughs> Okay, finances. Okay, so finances, and I figure they might talk about pension and other things, so possibly investment, who knows? So let us link in. Let us link and let us learn a little more that even the little pittance that we get, <laughs> we can put aside something. All right? Can put aside something. Let us continue to pray for those who are ill, those who are sick, Let's remember them in our prayers. Pray for those who have lost loved ones. Um, you know, please pray. Yes, Brother Gary was right. You know, you can't tell the person that it's now time to get over. Because, I, I, well, pray, you know, pray. Because Sister Pansy, you know, one of her struggles right now is to come to church without Brother Bonnie. You know, I talked to her this past week, and that was her struggle. That was her struggle. Um, so let us continue to pray. Pray for these, you know, who have lost loved ones. Um, Sister Sandra Laird and, you know, the Miller family recently buried a son, a brother, you know, an uncle. And so let us pray. Let us pray for them. Applications for the Youth Senior Scholarship will be available from Sunday, well, it started from last week, and it's during the course of the, the week. It's from 10, Christina, 9, 9 to 5, 9 to 5 here, 9 to 5 here. Please, you know, come 
Um, we have four basic school, primary school, um, secondary, and also tertiary, I believe. So we cover all, all of that. And you can get forms after service if you need forms. And remember the Jerry and Nevio scholarship ends on the 14th. Yeah, it wraps up on the 14th this week. So if you want to apply for that too, um, please, please get a form from Sister Chelsea, Christina Hansen, that is. Please place your offering in the box and a receptacle, receptacle will be there and online if you want to do that through the account. Faith promise offering that was normally collected on, in June. Now we have changed that this year to the end of July, the last Sunday of July. All right, and so put aside that and designate that this is faith promise offering. I'll give to the Lord and, and trust God to provide. Trust God to provide. Don't believe Satan that you give because you won't get. <laughs> give out of your love and your care for Almighty God, God's church. Okay? So this end, end of last Sunday of July is faith from his offering. Pastor Jackson returns today and there is no storm or anything. So let us pray that everything will be okay. Smooth running that he can return this day. I believe it's this evening. All right. So let us continue to pray for him there. Please obey all protocols regarding COVID, um, COVID-19. And let us play our part. Let us play our part. Now, our three-day, we call it, we wanted to call it um, so, um, camp, summer camp, but we, we give it the vacation Bible school. Our three-day VBS starts on the 27th to the 29th of July. Three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the age groups? On Tuesday, the age group is six to nine. Six to nine, and we are taking 30 children. 30 children. That's the age group. 30, nothing more. All right? So if we have children who falls in that age group here at Penwood, please, the registration start today. Touch base with me. All right, I touch base with Ella Walker or any of the leaders. Give the name of that student to, because when it's 30, that's it. We are not taking any more. All right, we have all the assistant teachers, all the teachers, and we need one and two more helpers, maybe two, three more helpers, and we are good. But lunch will be provided. It starts at 10 a.m. in the morning and goes to 1 p.m., and lunch will be provided. Age group, six to nine, 10 to 12 and 13 to 15. So if you have any children, um, grand in that age group, in those age groups, you can start registering them for the Tuesday, the smaller ones, the middle age, 10 to 12, the Wednesday, and the, the 13 to 15 on the Thursday. All right? We hope to have some fun there, craft and everything. All right, so please, please, please. We are, we'll be also going down to Tripe Lane and also try to touch base with Back Road and allocate a number to them too, All right? Also, please, for evangelism team, we would like to have a team meeting come this Saturday at 5 p.m evangelism team. Now, it's not just for the team only. It's for the entire church. If you, if you will, you know, and you want to come, please come. Because, you know, with the little window that is open now, now, we want to tap into that and do something. Do something. Please come out this Saturday at 5 p.m. Evangelism meeting. All right? Please. It will be in the WhatsApp group for the church, so you can be reminded. Sister Winifred and Sister Herman, they are not well. Um, let us continue to pray for them, especially, you know, Sister ja 
Brother Jackson, that is, Barrington Jackson, you know, from West Bay from Road there. He had a stroke recently, and we need to continue being prayer for him. All right. Um, any other announcement that you need to? Who, who are you pointing to? Oh, the recommitment. All right. All right, Sister Princess. There was a. Let us have a prayer right now. Let us all be standing at this time as we have a prayer, thanking God for this recommitment as we also close. Father, be glorified, be praised. Thank you that you are the sustainer of us all. Father, you are the keeper of us all, dear God, through death. Lord, when suffering comes, you are there, dear God, and the prerogative is yours. And help us, dear God, always to trust you in all things. Thank you for your coverage. Lord, even Patrina, dear God, as she has made this recommitment to you, God. Father, I pray, dear Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you'll reignite, dear God, whatever needs to be reignited, dear Lord. That, Lord, she'll be on fire for you regarding total commitment in serving you in all she does. And, Father, the hearts that need to be touched today, Lord, I pray you'll touch us. That as we go forth in this day, Lord, we will rejoice. And Lord, be in your hands a worthy tool. Lord, bless us now as we depart from this place. Thank you for your preacher. Thank you for your words, words of encouragement. We give you all praise and all glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sings flow, raise him all great here below. Raise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord bless you as you go. Amen.